from the darkest corners of Tumblr comes a podcast where we take two of your favorite fictional characters, get them together, and ask, do we ship it? Hey, everybody, welcome back to Ships in the Night. I'm Zach Wilson here surviving. I have only partially melted today. I, I can't tell. Greg, how are you holding up in the 111 degree weather? Uh, well, I'm glad that you asked, Zach. Um, I have shed this material form. Uh, I have fully evaporated. And now uh, I am much like a uh, cricket uh, sheds their exoskeleton. I have shed this mortal coil and I am here as ethereal goo. So thank you very much for uh, having me on the show. And uh, in, I, I welcome everybody to the new and improved Greg. Uh, goo, goo, goo reg is what I'm going by now. Yeah, look, I mean, it's so hot in here. I'm just trying to live like Nelly told me to. Uh, you know, it's getting so hot in here, so I have taken off all of my clothes. Uh, it rules. Having an excuse to just go full on <laughs> naked, like, great. I, I, I was so sick of the shackles of underwear throughout all of our past recordings. And now I think we're really going to get some good content. Now that we're not restrained by elastic and cotton. Oh, yeah. I just wanted to make sure that our audience knew that this is the beauty of, of doing these shows remotely and not on camera is that we uh, this episode, there's just it's just full on naked talking about shipping. And ju- if that makes you uncomfortable, just imagine how it makes our guest feel today, because we've got returning to the podcast for his third time for, or the hat trick. It's Alex Salem. Oh, my God. Is there a hat trick club? Do I? I'm a founding member of the, 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 the three timers. I don't, I'm not sure if, if Alex is the first one to do it or the second. I can't remember. I have no memory of these things. I, I, that's, that's fine. I, I'm, I'm certain that the uh, the message boards will will do the digging for us, and, and we can figure it out uh, uh, later. Lord Michaels it's, is keeping either way, track of all either way. Of this. So I throw the beer. I think he's going to be. Yeah. Uh, awesome. Uh, all right. So what do you guys say? We just dive into this first couple. Let's make it happen. Uh, Let's I do have, it. I have not fully uh, so, evaporated yet, but I am. I am. I'm here in liquid form, <laughs> like sort of still fleshy, but in but in uh, like a liquid form of flesh. And and Greg, I don't understand uh, 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 what you're talking about. What am I, an animal? I will. I will succumb to the restrictions of elasticity and wear underwear like a decent ball of, of liquid flesh that I am, my friend. <laughs> That's the only thing holding you together right now. <laughs> Just an extremely soggy pair of underwear. Well, all right. I think it is time to kick it off. And this week we're doing a a, a, a themed episode somewhat because Nintendo went out of their way this week to announce the big 35th anniversary of Super Mario. So we've got an all Nintendo uh friends of mario podcast for you today because we've already done mario he's off somewhere happy or maybe not happy with wreck it ralph which we did once before i don't honestly don't remember how that one ended but either way mario's busy with wreck it ralph so today would you say that at age 35 would you say that at age 35 mario is too old to be doing mushrooms all the time asking for a friend (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> no man look he's uh he's just transcended onto like the silicon valley train where now he's just need to shift paradigms it's of, like big. what a platformer needs in this new digital age right he, like listen you don't make mario he's pivoting, run he's pivoting, without he's taking AZ. some psychedelics okay <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> oh man well, today we're going to be talking about one of Mario's oldest friends or or enemies, depending on when you look at uh, their their timeline, because it's Donkey Kong with someone who shares his name. Oh, I hope they're not related because it's King Kong, Donkey Kong and King Kong. First reactions. Salem, I'm going to toss it to you first. What do you think of this ship? Well, 
I like to think of Donkey Kong and Mario, as, speaking of tech, as like the uh, Steve Jobs and Bill Gates of their respective fields. Rivals at first, <laughs> and then ultimately two of the best friends either could possibly have as they only they understand the path each have walked together. Um, uh, first re- reaction to uh, King Kong. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I'm picturing DK calling up his now best bud, Mario the Plumber, to say, so I'm seeing this gorilla. Um, I, you know, I, I, I don't know. On, on paper, I can't think of a better, on paper, I can't think of a better one, a better match at first blush, Zach. That's how I'm feeling. Oh, interesting. Okay. Greg, what do you think? Well, this is a tough one for me because uh, DK has gone through a lot of rebranding during his time. Uh, <laughs> he was once just sort of a mindless gorilla who liked to snatch up princesses. And then uh, in 1994, I want to say, Nintendo realized that they could give him his own platforming series and gave him a sweet ass boom box uh, as well as, you know, a funky, fresh 3D makeover. So like... I feel like Donkey Kong has maybe kept up with the times, uh, whereas King Kong still very much live in that isolated island lifestyle. You know, I, I, I'm curious to see how these two make it work. Yeah, I guess like, let's get into it. Like, we got to figure out, like, what is the meat cute between these two great apes? What do you guys think? Is there anything sparking for you as we try to flesh out this story? Well, uh, we got the island living going on. Yeah, they they definitely have that in common. So I think that, you know, these two are maybe trying to expand their business empires. Donkey Kong. Listen, he's obviously he's he knows how to play the system, right? He knows how to go and like get his own platform and develop his own Island and make his own merchandise. He's got a sweet fucking peripheral with the Donkey Kong bongos, you know, like he is a, he is a (laughs) businessman by trade. And so I have to imagine that, uh, you know, Donkey Kong is going to uh, create some sort of a product, you know, the Donkey Kong tower in New York city And then all of a sudden, he's going to go to the copyright office and be like, what the fuck? There's another Kong out there. There's some jackass puppet using my name in stealing my (laughs) business. I don't think so. So I'm willing to bet that Funky Kong, uh, who we all know has an airline or is it Funky Kong? Yes, it is Funky Kong. who has Funky Kong Airlines. Yes. I believe that uh, DK (laughs) hops into that barrel on top of a plane, (laughs) a very tiny, tiny plane, and goes to Skull Island with the biggest fucking team of lawyers you have ever seen and just starts hacking into the jungle to serve a cease and desist. Oh man, he's. I'm just, I'm just underscoring your action right now. Keep going. I just see him. He jumps off the ship, and all of his lawyers are riding rhinoceroses behind him as they plow through this jungle, knocking aside King Kong's like island worshippers. Just like get out of the way. We have a, we have a. We have court papers to file. The way they announce themselves is sort of like a DJ, Donkey Kong, DK. You know, they they just um, they they sing that whenever they make Donkey Kong entrance. is here. That's right. That's right. That, that is their way of saying DK <laughs> is in the building. Uh, is by they do that. Oh, those sick rhymes uh, all about um, all five members of the squad's best features as a player. <laughs> Huh. <laughs> well that's the thing is that lanky kong you know he was he has had fun in his early 20s being a clown and everything but when he realized that life is about more than goofing off he went to fucking law school and just became the most vicious business attorney <laughs> that you have ever seen and now he uses those super long stretchy arms of his uh to serve court documents and to slap people up with uh cease and desist 
Genesis notices. <laughs> that all tracks to me. This 100% makes sense within the DK universe. Okay, so these two, so DK and King Kong, they have to like have the, have it out then over the, the 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 usage of the name. This is like straight up replaying a genuine lawsuit between Nintendo and Universal, by the way. <laughs> which I don't think we I don't think you guys did intentionally, but I watched a documentary series about video games very uh, only about a week ago, so it's all fresh in my brain. Did the lawsuit uh, between and so it's just like who owns the name Kong? Did the lawsuit between Universal and Nintendo also result in? a lifelong uh beautiful relationship you know it ended up with them both with with the name kong being kind of like just like left into the uh like free use territory basically okay okay this is important to know because i was very curious if our good friend steve weeby aka the king of kong would be making any appearances in this matchup (laughs) (laughs) yeah he pops in and is like actually i own the name kong uh, (laughs) and i have this speed run to prove it (laughs) i'm submitting it on a vhs tape Uh, don't look at the label too closely (laughs) okay a grown man in a referee uniform will tell me that it's all right (laughs) maybe that's like that's the turn right is it's like that uh they're king kong and donkey kong are furiously battling it out donkey kong uh just serving subpoena after subpoena while uh, king kong just throws i don't know dinosaur bones at them poor lanky kong is like this goes highly unorthodox waka waka honk honk uh and then who should pop in but this fucking so-called King of Kong. And then these two look at each other and they realize like, oh, we have more in common. We have a greater enemy <laughs> to defeat. We must defeat Billy Mitchell. Slam. <laughs> yeah, it's, exactly. not it's not Nintendo. It is Billy Mitchell. Folks, this is a classic case of the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Uh, both Kongs uh, have been vilified uh, for uh, quite quite a lot of their upbringing. People, people feared them when they were like, bro, bro, I'm just a regular guy. And, uh, you know, the same for, for, for Steve. Steve Weeby, uh, obviously. Yeah. So I can. Okay. So obviously, this ponytail dude gets crushed immediately. Uh, yeah, we the move right past it. I love team it. Team up scene ever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I think so. This makes them maybe like the knowledge that they've actually killed a person. <laughs> it's like, it brings did, them together. Why isn't he coming back? Doesn't he have more lives? Why, why didn't he turn <laughs> it into coins or rings of some kind or even bananas? Yeah, he did. Yeah, I'm used to this sound of like, boop, 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 and he just made a sound that was like, ah! <laughs> that doesn't sound right. <laughs> so as they're... <laughs> furiously burying the body uh and uh cranky kong is instructing all of the other kongs to be like you never saw nothing (laughs) this family must stay together the legacy must carry on (laughs) they they turn to dk i mean he is the leader of the bunch after all so they so dk has to figure out how to get them out of this dark situation is it that he and is the best way out of it for him and king kong to go on the land like go underground for a while oh at, at very much so this is exactly when uh diddy kong pulls up uh definitely late because he's got this flashy new car and he thinks he's untouchable and he's such you know so such a big shot with his glasses and his and his racing friends and uh and then he's the wheel man and uh, gets him out of there 
yeah, he gets them on their hu- his hovercraft. Uh, oh yeah, and takes them out of there, collecting balloons along the way. Perfect. Uh, God damn, that is gonna be a big ass hovercraft though to keep King Kong. Afloat. I mean, Diddy Kong comes with like a little fleet. He's got like little biplanes that they can jump into, and like a bunch of hovercraft. They race off. DK is like, this is way more flexible than the carts that Mario usually provide. I, I, I think this raises a very important question because Donkey Kong rolls in with his squad from the get go. Diddy Kong never goes nowhere without his whole fleet. I'm talking Tip Top. I'm talking the Rooster Guy. I don't remember too many others. There was Conker. Uh, after a while, Conker, is yeah. this too many people for uh, King Kong himself, uh, the K-Man? Is he? Um, does he feel comfortable with with uh, Donkey's uh, Donkey Kong's huge uh, posse here? Does something get lost? Does the personal touch get lost? Oh. Well, here's what I would uh, counter to that, Alex, is that, you know, we never quite establish where Donkey Kong Island is or, you know, even the uh, the Skull Island itself is uh, pretty nebulous in terms of where it is actually located. I think that these two. Now that they're on the run, right, they, they can't keep the secret for that long. You know that Conker is going to blurt this out, you know, on a drunken text message uh, the second that it happens. I think that they put <laughs> their brains together and Donkey Kong is like, look, I have the legal team. You have the like sheer brute strength of a small army. I think it's time that we form our own independent nation that is free of the clutches of international law. Like, if they want to come after us for murking this uh, freelance gamer, they're going to have to go through so many UN channels that, like, (laughs) it's just going to be a bureaucratic nightmare. So these two essentially set up their own island nation state uh, (laughs) where like they can live as kings. And this is where it finally becomes sexual, right? Because you have these two kings living together, ruling together. You know that that is going to manifest itself in a very physical love. Certainly by that point, there is no uh, uh, other other person who can match uh, for them uh, in terms of attraction. It's, it's really only the other. Yeah, they share. Well, the, oh, the, my God. The, uh, the bonds, big gorilla. The bonds, which they. Yeah, the bonds, which they now share. I mean, look, they've established an island nation. They murdered a dude. They already have the same name. So, like, you know, the marriage certificate is Jesus Christ done and done. Like. Yeah, they are they are officially hooking up and they are a small Caribbean island power couple. And who knows, like, you know, uh, Funky Kong already has the airline. You know that I'm sure a lot of people would love to come and see an island full of like crazy monkeys with weird personalities. I'm sure that Cranky Kong, you know, is willing to set up a distillery, you know, banana rum and just get people fucking wasted. They create a thriving tourism industry on this island. Oh, yeah. So it's just like a fan. There becomes this bizarre family run tourist trap with King Kong and Donkey Kong at the head of it. Like, you know, up on a, a, a weird structure with like oddly angular platforms and ladders to get up to it but there it's the two of them up there just like <laughs> just loving it you have to ride a mine cart in from the airport that's how you get to the resort <laughs> and then you hop into a barrel and <laughs> shoot you <laughs> yeah <laughs> I can uh, see this fucking Candy Kong as like you know the uh, island spokesperson in her like sexy gorilla uh, dress. Like, hey, come on to Kong Island. Any? No, no, no. Goes. I think it's more like, <laughs> like welcome uh, uh, to uh, Kong uh, Island. And then the end, and then. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Goldblum's there taking the tour. You, Two you for did, one you, drink You crazy special. son of a bitch. You, you, you actually did it. Yeah. <laughs> a John Williams cover yes, of yes. the DK rap starts yes. playing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I just now I just need I need somebody with a violin and like an orchestra to please cover the DK rap for us. Like that's all I need in life now is that's just like need, a very man. soulful, beautiful cover. Folks, Zach rap. knows what he needs. Yeah. It's on you to deliver it to him. If you don't, I'm going to consider it an act of aggression. Just putting that out there. Look, I'm just asking you to put your hands together if you want to clap and make a beautiful version of this funky <laughs> rap. <laughs> Uh, speaking of the rap, I don't, I don't know how to, pro how to like smoothly bring this up, but it's, uh, I need to, I need to make the joke cause it popped into my head about five minutes ago. At some point when these two are having sex, you know, that Donkey Kong is going to take out his goat coconut gun and fire in spurts. Uh, you've been holding on to that for five minutes. Yeah. I couldn't find a smooth way to bring it up. So I had to. You usually don't want to do this when it comes to the sex talk. I had to force it. Uh, oh! I mean, oh. dude, there's so, there are so many fucking banana metaphors, and you went with the coconut gun? I mean, I, but I firing in spurts. It's a lyric from the rap, Greg. I would have brought it up when we were on the mine cart uh, on the way into the island. That's just me. <laughs> but I appreciate your commitment, Zach. You 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 said, no, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. Guys, 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 guys. I got this. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. Just wait. Just wait. Hold on. Hold on. I, I, I can't find it. Oh, I know it's in here somewhere. <laughs> kudos, kudos, kudos for follow through Zach. Fine, if it makes you feel better, Greg, when they when they got into the bedroom, King Kong like laid down, and then his and then Donkey Kong finally found the real golden banana. Yeah, there you go. All right, that's unpeel. I, I, unpeel this, you unpeel gorilla man. <laughs> Uh, all right. Wow. You know what? Holy this crime. is taking a this is taking an uncomfortable turn, uh, and I, I have no one to blame but myself. So I'm just gonna ask you guys straight up: uh, Do these two make it? What do you think, Alex? I'm throwing it to you first. Who who first? I missed that. Alex, you. go ahead. Yeah, 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 yeah. no, no, I mean, no, like, not in the slightest, do not in the slightest. It? This doesn't work out at all. They, they do <laughs> no. not make it. This, this, this has absolutely no chance. It's a relationship fused together by the bonds of power. Are you listening to yourselves? That never works out. Eventually, one of them is going to have to be top gorilla. They, they both want it. They're, they're going to want to see themselves as the ruler supreme and the other one as their companion by their side. They're not going to be able to adequately share responsibility and be cool with that. And that is not only going to spell doom for the relationship, but also doom for the island as a business. And I think the both of you know this. Fuck. I hadn't considered that. <laughs> I mean, yep. absolute power corrupts absolutely. Absolutely. And these two, yeah. What's more unstable than a small country run by gorillas? <laughs> uh, angry, excitable gorillas whose entire economy is dependent on bananas. <laughs> like, shit, the Dole Company gets in here and just straight up murks them. Oh, my God. Yeah, to be fair, there are these magic bananas that, like, spin in midair like they rotate on an axis which is just it's just baffling to see that in real life yeah shit magic bananas oof but still yeah i i'm gonna you've swayed me alex uh i think that absolute power does corrupt uh absolutely uh and yeah absolute power corrupts absolutely that's Episode and there's title. absolutely no way this title. is gonna work out long term it's it's really heartbreaking yeah. but it's true Mm -hmm. it's exactly. really sad so i yeah i mean I'll, i i get it so like alex it's safe to say that you do not ship it uh uh one moment sorry consulting with my attorney and uh, yes no my client does not ship it <laughs> that was funnier if you could see me Greg, like, you're a like, convert. look at the microphone <laughs> 
<laughs> Greg, uh, safe to say that you do not ship it as well? Well, I don't think it lasts. I do ship it, uh, mostly just because I want to loot and plunder this island nation before it goes down. <laughs> like, I want to sell a shit ton of timeshares on this island nation. <laughs> Uh, and, you know, uh, wash my money through a couple of uh, unnamed LLCs. Uh, and, you know, just because I can't have a nice uh, view on Kong Island doesn't mean I can't get a nice place in the Poconos, you know? Yeah, I, I kind of want to ship it just because I feel like this is like a real hot, like hot and heavy hookup for these two. And then like what it leads to is this island nation is in ruins, but is like taken over by Diddy and Dixie. And they come in as the like <laughs> inheriting kids, and they turn it into like a sem like a successful place by like just eschewing what the the generation before them did. They're like, well, we, we, if we're just not corrupt, we'll not we won't br like destroy this island. Uh, <laughs> and I want to see what they do with it, so I ship it for that reason alone. <laughs> they build a museum that doesn't turn away from the horrors and mistakes of the past. <laughs> <laughs> Good for them acknowledging it. I, I think. I uh, think most of the island just becomes racetracks, though, if uh, if Diddy is uh, <laughs> at least somewhat at, at the helm. No, I, I don't. I don't. I, I can't say that I ship it, and I, I certainly don't believe it'll work out. That doesn't mean I don't want to see the Oliver Stone movie about this fall from grace. Oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Man, we've been talking about, like, who's going to uh, direct the new Mario movie, but shit, we need to get Oliver Stone in on this for sure. Uh, yeah, I'm very much on board with that. Hell yeah. All right, guys. That's going to do it for this ship, this this for, of our, our first Nintendo ship of the day. We're going to take a quick break and then come right back with another one of Mario's friends and somebody who might be looking for him. And we're back, and it is time to talk about our next ship. And this one, this this Mario buddy, we're just he's just a little guy who's like he's always off on adventures, and he you know he never he never finds someone for him. We're talking, of course, about Toad. Toad, everyone's favorite racer in Mario Kart 64, but not their favorite in the heart. And we're talking about shipping Toad with. And just wait, I'm going to pause for dramatic effect here. Shaggy from Scooby-Doo. Like soy and now, Yeah, I'll let your brain fill in the reason that this ship got sent to us. Uh, <laughs> what is the line between a weird stoner from the 70s and Toad, the mushroom-headed bizarre character? What could it be? <laughs> uh is it safe to say that the meet cue for these two is that they? I'm just gonna jump right to it. They meet at Burning Man, right? And it's mistaken oh, identity. Oh, so. yeah. I mean, uh, depending on the year, I'll give you Coachella uh, if you really want. But uh, I don't know how, how how big up we're gonna get on this. I mean, Coachella is just so fucking corporate, right? Like, I feel Truth. Uh, yeah, Shaggy uh, is very I, I think much more of a Burning Man. And and Toad's entire like economy is dependent on coins that just float around in the air. He's going to be a little bit wary of well, capitalism technically that's, as that's well. That's not the U.S. Uh, dollar, so that would fit into the barter system economy of Burning Man as opposed to Coachella. So yeah, I think all evidence <laughs> all evidence does point to Black Rock City here, folks. <laughs> So, it, does, so does this kick off though with like Shaggy accidentally like trying to eat Toad? Like he sees Toad at his little campsite, uh, and he's just like, "Oh man, I really co I'm coming down. I need to get another mushroom in me." Zoinks! My dog stopped talking. I gotta <laughs> fucking get a fix. He, he he reaches down to the nearest uh, hallucinogenic-looking substance when he hears a whoa 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 whoa. 
<laughs> yeah. Toad has absolutely brought one of his motorcycles along from, uh, you know, the Mario Kart series. And he's just fucking tooling through the desert. And yeah, Shaggy sees this as like a vision of what could be more enticing than a hallucinogenic mushroom speeding towards you on a motorcycle. (laughs) Like that's a sign from God, my friend, that you need to get high. Uh, So, okay, he tries... Does he get a bite out of him? Like, I'm, I'm genuinely curious if just a fucking chunk of Toad's skull is gone after this encounter. I mean, maybe. I mean, Toad, I think, would let's, heal pretty fast, though. Let's explore like, this. Like, he's a fun like, guy. The, the, does it really? He, he's a very fun guy, Zach. I think this, you've hit the nail right on the head. And I don't think that really stops um, stops Toad. Maybe he's used to it. Maybe he's very offended. I don't know. But either what what if what if hear me out here what if either way they're now physically bonded despite either of their best efforts i'm not saying they're not both interested i'm just saying like is this like a bowser's inside story where uh shaggy does successfully consume toad (laughs) and now he is physically inside of Shaggy? like what if fuck what if toad is a psychedelic and then the psychedelic component is just it's much like uh you know that itchy and scratchy cartoon where there are a billion tiny uh itchies inside of scratchy like tooling around in his brain when you said this is a bowser's inside story i was like wait a minute wait a minute i was not i was reminded not of itchy and scratchy but the greek myth of persephone and hades uh and i was wondering oh shucks if he consumes uh toad is he required to stay in bowser's dungeon for like six months out of the year is is that the pact is that what you're saying oh okay Fuck. All right. So not only have we hit upon a uh, Nintendo connection here, we've also connected on a uh, international treaty and law uh, through line. (laughs) Because upon learning that a member of the Mushroom Kingdom has been physically consumed (laughs) by this fucking stoner out in Burning Man, uh, (laughs) Princess Peach sends an extradition order to the United States. Where uh, they have to ship Shaggy in for a trial for murder of one of their own. <laughs> so, is, and then from there, it, like Shaggy is in a Mushroom Kingdom prison. Let's be uh, honest, it's a dungeon. He's in a dungeon, and all of a sudden, he starts seeing and hearing Toad talking to him. And they're just having full on conversations that only Shaggy can hear, but they're getting to know each other better and better as they just like spend all this time in the dungeon. I love how we've thrown just any semblance of a natural conversation between these two as a way that they meet out the window, but also that as this is happening and fair, uh, 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 Shaggy is extradited from the great state of Nevada to the Mushroom Kingdom to be locked up to await justice. Meanwhile, what does this remind you of, guys? Our our object of desire is locked up inside of uh, Bowser's dungeon, Bowser's realm. Obviously, the Mystery Machine, Scooby-Doo and the gang, they have to go through all of the Mario levels to try and fight the final boss to save their (laughs) fallen brethren. So that's all. That's the B Uh, story. That's all happening on the outside this whole time. Just keep that in mind in the background. Velma is just straight up like beating Luigi to death, (laughs) trying to get Shaggy out of his dungeon. I'm Luigi. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. But during this time, yeah, I think Zach is absolutely right. These two are connecting on truly the most intimate level, like. Uh, Toad is already inside of Shaggy in a whole way that, like, you know, was previously unconceivable to either of them. (laughs) So, yeah, when you have that kind of, like, soul-merging experience, 
I, I think that, yeah, of course something is going to blossom between them. Um, now, I, I, I'm unsure of how the relationship proceeds from there. Um, I have, I have so a thought. My, oh, no, no, Zach, go ahead. So he, my thought is just that, like, these two are connect. I have, like, a whole thing worked out in my brain right now. These two are connecting. They are – they're getting, like, like very just, like, intimate in terms of, like, they're, like as much as they can. Like, in Shaggy's mind, they're, like, spooning on the floor of this dungeon as they wait – as they, like, wait his trial. And they've just been like, – they've shared everything. And, uh, like, there's, like, a – there's, like, a weird – like ghost moment where they they kind of get intimate but like it, if you were just watching it just looks like shaggy's touching himself uh, <laughs> uh, it's literally the stranger <laughs> like toad but, has taken control of shaggy's arm <laughs> yes yes exactly uh but then like what so what the the big question that they start asking is like as they get closer to the trial date toad is starting to fade and like he's not as like there as he once was and shaggy's like what's happening toad's like well you're digesting me i'm dying and like they're slow like as he digests him toad is slowly their their bond like the the ability to see him is slowly fading away and the question is when toad dies in this way does he have an extra guy? Does he come back to life? I, I, I have uh, I have an idea uh, uh, in terms of a possibility of something that could happen uh, uh, relevant to this question with with data with cited data to support my theory. Are you ready for it? Please, lay it on us. The 1989 classic Super Mario Brothers film. What do we know about the fungus? Is that it is everywhere. Everything is connected. And every single one iteration of it is connected to the sort of organic super network. So Shaggy has consumed Toad. And maybe Toad as we once knew him. I like to think of the guy who uh, he's first uh, sitting in the lobby of Peach's Castle in Super Mario 64 when Mario first enters and is like, what the hell's going on? And somebody's Toad's there because somebody's got to be like, dude, you're supposed to jump into the paintings. And he's like, oh, OK. And but he appears yeah, three, yeah. four more other places. But he's always there at all times, even though he's one guy. Is he one guy in multiple places at once? No, he's many guys who are all the same guy. Shaggy eats one, but Toad will always be with him. Okay, that's not the direction I thought you were going. I thought that you were saying that, okay, he finally digests him, and then Shaggy looks outside of his cell, and there's just another fucking Toad that's like, oh yeah, I was also him the whole time. I that was too. watching as you touched yourself. It was super hot. <laughs> like, <laughs> um... Yeah, so I'm both inside and outside of you at the same time. What are you doing later? Dude, that's beautiful. Because then what that means is that, like, Shaggy has this moment, this realization, like, oh, my God, I literally merged my third eye with this person. Like, we were actual soulmates, and now he's gone. And then Toad like reappears before him. And not only does it mean that he's reunited with his lover, but Toad brings him out of the cell and shows him the Mushroom Kingdom. And there are literally thousands upon thousands of lovers out there. Like, <laughs> I think so. All, right. His fucking, his whole thing was like, oh my God, like I could never, the, the only thing about this relationship Relationship that is uh, so hurtful to me is that I can never hold you in my arms. And now there is a literal sea of mushroom people that he can fondle and return the favor sexually to for the rest of his days. That's fucking beautiful. Are you kidding it, me? It couldn't have happened to a nicer. I, I mean, that's just. Stoner. That Yeah. And he can keep getting <laughs> fucked up for the rest of his life. <laughs> They're just like, yeah, eat away, dude. Like, there's a billion more of us. We never yeah. die. Like, yeah. just stay yeah. fucked up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> oh, ugh, ugh, it has a whole new meaning now, and I don't like it. But I love it at the same time. Uh, I that's how this story ends to me, guys. I don't. I think we can wrap up that this, with, with, with the infinity. puzzle piece there. With the mysteries of infinity, with yes, I would inf- agree. Yeah, yeah. Of just like Toad saying, "Eat me to Shaggy, eat me forever." Uh, so I'm gonna ask you guys. Uh, but I think I know the answer. Do you ship it, Greg? Let's start with you this time. Just to see the look on those fucking prude Mario and Peach's faces after it's like, oh, I went through eight levels and now I get a kiss on the cheek. And then Mario looks out like over his shoulder (laughs) and is just a fucking like a Roman Greco painting of like body parts and sexual organs pulsing and moving all as one and separate at the same time. Yes, I ship this. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. Yeah, uh, Alex, what do you think? You're, you're asking, do I ship it, Shaggy and Toad? Toad and Shaggy, do I, do I ship it? Are they together? Are they together for how long? I mean, what even is time itself if there's an infinite number of Toads? Is time even a concept or is Toad just forever? And Toad is inside of Shaggy and Shaggy all... Yes, I do. I do ship it. I think it's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just, just adding to what Greg said... <laughs> Also think about what happens when the uh, the the mystery gang finds them too, and you have. I feel like it would go uh, Fred, Fred and Daphne are horrified at what they're seeing. They are just like, "What? This is not the the stuff that my Necker chief signed up for." Uh, Velma, however extremely oh, understanding oh velma 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 what are you gonna do in this scenario she um uh probably Hesley scoop might do the same thing like you're saying these are really good mushrooms and there's an infinite amount of them well <laughs> And I think even fucking Fred and Daphne are satisfied because Lord knows there's a mystery to solve like every week of like, ah, who took the princess? <laughs> and Mara's like, it, it's a Bowser. <laughs> like, we know this. No, no, no. It's not the mystery. It's, uh, it's you have to jump and you have to you have to hit the box. And- <laughs> but they're like, mm, well, we better follow the clues. <laughs> like they're just <laughs> occupied for the rest of their days. They're, yeah, they're fine. That, I think, I think they're, yeah, I like this. I, I think they'll never, like, them and Mario will never quite see eye to eye, but they will, they will play for the same team gladly. They will respect each other. <laughs> Meanwhile, like, Scooby and, I don't know, Wario, like, they, they have, like, a, <laughs> like a buddy comedy that, like, we'll get to later in the franchise. I, I don't know. Possibilities, guys. They're endless. <laughs> oh man well that's gonna oh boy well like well we stew on that i'm it's sorry just a mushroom one, one, real real quick scooby-doo gets one look at yoshi and is like well when in the mushroom kingdom before this goes Stop. any <laughs> I keep too, trying too to end it. It's getting more and more horrifying by the second. Uh, so I'm going to pull the plug and we're going to move on, take a quick break, uh, and then we will be right back with our matchmaker segment. Stick around. And we're back. Thank you so much for listening, guys. Uh, it really does just like it, it gives us a smile every time we hear from you guys. So give us give us a like, give us a, a rating. You know, throw a comment in, in in the in the iTunes or the the Podbean or the wherever you're listening to this because we love hearing from you, and we love hearing from our matchmaking service 
where we get to find out who is single out there in the land of fiction and who we can find love for. And Alex Salem, I hear that you have brought someone to our doors, someone that we need to find love for. Who is it? Yes, uh, I'm even sorry to report, but I know if anybody can crack the case, uh, a la the mystery machine would, it would be you gentlemen. Uh, this gentleman arrived on my door, uh, forlorn, uh, heartbroken, uh, and just, you know, in need of, of some of that TLC. And I said, you guys, don't worry, my friend. I, I know exactly the two gentlemen uh, to call. Uh, and I brought him with me today. Uh, he's a dear friend of mine. Uh, he may look like beloved actor Bill Murray to you, but I like to refer to him as, as Steve Sisu, the captain of the Belafonte. Um which is a ship uh, and and uh, and uh, arbiter and host of the Life Aquatic with Steve Zissou film series. <laughs> All right, I I have a good feeling that we can find someone for Steve Zissou. Uh, side note: one of my favorite movies. I Mine love too. Life oh Aquatic. my god, love Life Aquatic. Uh, All right, so Greg. Why don't you, uh, do you want to kick us off or do you want me to go? Yeah, go for it, my, my dude. So if you're looking for Steve, you better check under the sea. Because that is where you'll find Steve, underneath the sea lab, underneath the water, sea lab, 2021. I'm talking <laughs> Captain Murphy from the Adult Swim series, Sea Lab 2021. Not only is this a guy who uh, understands the responsibility of keeping a bunch of knuckleheads in line, but they share the most important thing of all, which is a love of all things aquatic. Steve Azuzu can try to run away from love like a ham running away from Christmas, but at the end of the day, uh, uh, Captain Murphy is just the one that's going to be there for him, you know? He's the guy who understands exactly what Steve needs. And what Steve needs is a punching bag. I think that Captain Murphy is dumb enough that he is going to be uh, satisfying Steve Zuzu, which is, uh, you know, going to be good for both of their egos. Uh, first all right. of all, I absolutely so that's, real that's quick, an option may, on the I table. I love the image of a ham running away from Christmas, like it will not accept its fate uh, <laughs> and has other plans in mind. But I have to point out, Greg, uh, lovingly, your use of the name Steve Azuzu, which I'll just say flatly is completely incorrect. However, I did enjoy listening to you say it. <laughs> I can't listen, man. It's been a long, hot day. My tongue is all <laughs> fucked up. Like, just let it. Yes, fly. sorry, Gureg. You are in fact evaporated. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Well, we wouldn't be ships in the night matchmaking service if we didn't give two options for this fictional single. So here's, here's someone else that I was thinking about. Because I, you know, it obviously this has to be somebody. That, that is familiar with the ocean, somebody that can that can connect with, with all the time that Steve sp- spends under the sea. And I think that that's really what the key is because who else would be better than Ariel, the little mermaid? I mean, come on, these two. She can show him all kinds of things. That he, that you want to find the jaguar shark? Ariel is going to just swim right up to one and start singing a song with it as it glows beautifully. The, not, but not only that, no, it's not just the ocean that these two have in common. I think that when Ariel, uh, the, 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 like, let's say, like, five years older than she was in the movie for, like, purpose of the podcast, uh, when these two connect, th- she is going to get that experience and finally be able to work through some of those daddy issues. And Steve is going to be oh so happy to join in on that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Interesting. So, Alex, uh... Do you have any questions for us uh, regarding either Captain Murphy from Sea Lab 2021 or Ariel from The Little Mermaid for your pal Steve um, Zissou? No, not in the slightest. But for purpose for purposes of uh, good discourse, why don't I ask one of each of you anyway? Uh, Greg um, is Captain <laughs> Murphy from uh, from Sea Lab 2021. How do you envision him and uh, Mr. Zissou? Uh, meeting uh, and or beginning their courtship. 
Okay. I, right. I can I can do that. And then got anything for for regarding the Little Mermaid? Uh, in, in the form of a question, Zach, uh, for something to, to reflect upon uh, for further input, I guess I would be curious. Um, what uh, What is Steve Zissou and uh, Ariel, the Little Mermaid's uh, favorite song? Like, what's the, what's the, what's going to be the song that they're like? Oh, that's our song. <laughs> all right, not taking it easy on me. Uh, all right, Greg, you ready? Yeah, let's do it. All right, here you go. So, Captain Murphy obviously shoots Steve out of the water. Like he is in his submergible <laughs> sub and just launches a fucking missile. At him. And it quickly, it quickly escalates to where uh, he is holding Steve hostage. He thinks that he is a foreign invader come to take over the Sea Lab. And from that, uh, you know, hostage situation love springs baby uh and eventually these two find that you know they both have a hatred for all things ocean and willing to kill each other all right wow lots Uh, to consider there zach how uh, about you buddy all right so here's the thing i've been thinking about this like what would what would their song be and i think like look i i know that uh steve zisu and his crew they definitely have a have a connection to david bowie and i think after he introduces ariel because she's too young to have really heard of david bowie before but realizing that there is so much pressure at the bottom of the ocean and within steve's uh submarine under pressure is just their song all the way uh it I mean, it's the terror of not of knowing what the world is about. It's the world that you're trying to be a part of. It all comes together. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, that was some real quick googling I had to do for like, wait, what Bowie song am I to go with for this bit? Uh, uh, all right. Well, Alex, we've given you two options. We've got Captain Murphy from Sea Lab 2021. We've got Ariel from The Little Mermaid to pair up with Steve Zissou from The Life Aquatic with Steve Zissou. Who do you want to ship Zissou. with your buddy? Yes. <laughs> we've uh, we've done some um, uh, some deliberation uh, on the matter and uh, and after careful consideration, uh, we, we we believe we've arrived at a at a ruling, uh, and I um, I think it's fair to say that the most appropriate matching for uh, uh, Mr. Zisu uh, of the two presented would have to be uh, Ariel the Little Mermaid. I mean, I didn't even really have to think about it. Uh, I, I love the Captain <laughs> Murphy option, but um, oh, wow. uh, yeah. I, I got to say, um, they they uh, Ariel is exactly Steve's type. Um, you know, yeah, she's she, yeah. Uh, you you you, you kind of hit the nail on the head. Maybe she's working her daddy issues out with Steve for a minute. Uh, he likes redheads. I will say some challenges later on in terms of longevity. Well, first of all, if Ariel's too young to have heard of David Bowie, I don't care. It's not about when you hear about David Bowie, but how long you continue to like worship David Bowie after that initial uh, uh, learning. Uh, there will be a, a period where I don't think she's quite as much a fan of his uh, marrow wanna usage as he is uh however they do have quite a lot in and also under killing the all the fucking animals in the ocean just pointing that out gonna throw that out there we are gonna have to keep that in mind <laughs> that'll, that'll be on the uh that'll be on the on the docket i i will say that um uh, we also would have accepted uh, Take Me to the River, Drop Me in the Water by the Talking Heads as a possible favorite song of theirs. Zach, I hit you with the harder question because I knew you wouldn't let me down. I'm a little disappointed you had to Google under pressure, but the pun is too good. And for a bonus point, I would deduce that even if... Short term, it's more of a hot and heavy kind of fling that doesn't last long term. Long term, 
there might be a little something in the works with Steve and Ariel's arch nemesis, Ursula. Ursula is probably a lot more similar in demeanor to Steve's <laughs> ex-wife, Eleanor Zisu, as portrayed by the uh, phenomenal, <laughs> exceptional Angelica Houston, also would have no problem with the killing of the animals and certainly has a much shrewder business sense that would uh, fund Steve's um, sale, uh, ultimately unprofitable uh, uh, sea excursion and film ventures, and that, that might have some potential there. So, uh, a fine awesome. showing indeed, gentlemen, a fine showing indeed. <laughs> Uh, well, Alex, thank you so much for joining us uh, on the podcast once again. It's been a blast. This was a, this was a fun one of just absolute ridiculousness. Uh, if people want to keep up with you or like other places they can like find you, listen to you, uh, give it, give it, throw out a plug. Where where can they go? Oh, absolutely a fun time, Zach, and absolutely ridiculous indeed, which is the only way I would have it. And if you enjoy some good ridiculousness. Uh, uh, I am uh, an affiliate, ooh, affiliate uh, streamer on Twitch, the fine live streaming service of twitch.tv. Hell you yeah. can find me at the handle over at twitch.tv slash shaman steve. That's S H A M A N underscore S T E V E. Shaman Steve on Twitch. Who's, who's Steve? Exactly. Well, I could say Zisu, couldn't I? Uh, I like to I like uh-huh. to stream uh, painting and uh, in real life and variety and and uh, and a real mixed bag. We're actually just getting kicked off, so it's the perfect time to join us. Well, I hope you don't get kicked off, so you can keep making them streams. Uh, Greg, if people want to keep you. up with you, where can they go? Uh, they can't anymore. I'm burning all my socials, dude. It's great. <laughs> I've, I've disconnected totally, and I've never been happier. So uh, if people want to find me, you, I don't know, go outside. <laughs> I'm on my bike a lot more. <laughs> that is, you know I'm what? Just picturing Greg, like that is the best answer you could have like, given. Find Greg. Where is Greg? <laughs> <laughs> uh well awesome uh i have not abandoned social media i don't know that i'm capable of doing it so you can still find me and stalk me on twitter and instagram at that zach wilson uh you can also uh i don't even know where what i was going i started saying also but then it's like hey what else am i doing just find me there I have semi funny tweets. Uh, we, we will uh, we will be back soon with another podcast. Until then, guys, this has been Ships in the Night, casting off.